What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports. This is another episode of Through the Mail Thursdays. I have three envelopes that I'm going to share with you uh, right now. I've been kind of on a vintage baseball binge lately. I've sent out a lot of vintage era uh, baseball cards, and I, I, I say vintage as in 1960s, 70s, and even some 1950s cards uh, with some of the players that are still living from that era. Um, I just really have uh, had a good time recently going through my older cards and sending them out to some of these guys. So. Uh, hopefully if I do this right, we're going to have a common theme on this video. Um, I've already given it away though because I'll probably put it in the intro. And um, we will uh, see if I get this right. So the first person that we're going to look at is indeed a former Seattle Pilot slash Chicago White Sox on and St. Louis Cardinal on four cards and I sent out a few players out of the Seattle Pilots set if you guys recall one of my very first pickup videos and this has been a couple almost gosh it's been a long time um, and I will post it up in the corner and at the end of this video and also in the description but I picked up this vintage um, 1980s Seattle Pilots set and the Seattle Pilots, who are now the Milwaukee Brewers, were actually only in the league for one season. So it's, it's a rare, rare thing to see a major league franchise only last a season. But the Seattle Pilots are just that. Uh, before, uh, McNurtney was a Pilot. He was a Chicago White Sox. And he signed two cards as a White Sox. And I also have a St. Louis Cardinals card, although you can see they clearly photoshopped out probably a Seattle, Seattle Pilots logo or a Brewers logo to say Cardinals at the top. Because that's obviously not Cardinal Red, <laughs> you know, on that card. So who is Jerry McNurtney? Uh, he is not, um, he was primarily a backup catcher most of his career. He only really was a starter with the Seattle Pilots and the Milwaukee Brewers uh, for the two seasons that he was with that organization. Uh, he got to the majors at 27 years old, uh, so he was relatively already an older player by the time he got there in 1964, and he was primarily used as the backup catcher um, until he was taken in the expansion draft by the Pilots. So in total, he spent nine years in the majors as a catcher, not a bad, not a bad gig as a, as a player, you know, being a backup catcher. He played for the White Sox, as you can see, the Seattle Pilots, one season with the Milwaukee Brewers, two seasons with the St. Louis Cardinals, and he finished up his career in 1973, and appearing in nine games for the Pittsburgh Pirates. So, overall, lifetime 237 hitter, um, didn't appear in a whole lot of games. Uh, 590 games over a nine-year career, but imagine the stories that this gentleman could probably tell being the backup catcher for all of those teams. I mean, just being a fly on the wall and having the opportunity to be a backup catcher in the major leagues, to be able to catch some of the greatest pitchers ever. I mean, he would probably caught, you know, um, Bob Gibson. He caught, you know, Steve Carlton, I mean, just, just to name a few. I can't think of any great pitchers off the Pilots, but as a Cardinal, I know he definitely caught those guys. And, uh, you know, he probably caught um, Wilbur Wood on the Chicago White Sox. I mean, the knuckleballer. I mean, that would have been, I'm sure he could tell some stories about trying to catch a knuckleball for sure. So anyways, thank you, um, Mr. McNurtney. I really appreciate adding those autographs to the collection. All right, so this next one, in keeping the theme of Seattle Pilots, is also a former Seattle Pilot, and that is Mr. Wayne Comer, or Comer, I'm going to assume Comer, on one, two, and three, all Seattle Pilots cards, which is pretty cool. 
Um, the Topps versions of the cards, despite the pilots only lasting for a season, they got cards in two sets for some reason. Um, so it's kind of a hard, uh, hard set to collect when you're uh, trying to collect all the all-time pilots. I would let me take that back. It would probably be pretty easy to collect all the all-time pilots autographs if that was something you'd be interested in doing. It wouldn't be like trying to collect the Yankees or the Cardinals or the Reds who have been around for 125 years or whatever. So, anyways, uh, Mr. Comer, uh, he was an outfielder, uh, kind of bounced around a little bit throughout his career. Uh, he started out with the Detroit Tigers. He also uh, he was on the '68 Tigers World Series team. Uh, so he got to play in the World Series as a backup outfielder. Uh, he was obviously taken in the expansion draft for the Seattle Pilots. He spent a season with the Seattle Pilots, and he also spent a season with the uh, Milwaukee Brewers after they converted their name. Uh, actually, I take that back. He did not spend the entire season with the Brewers as he was traded to the Washington Senators in the 1970 season. And it, I'm guessing either he was injured in the 71 season or he played in the minor leagues, uh, as there are no stats for 71. And he played one more season in 1972 for the Detroit Tigers. So primarily used as a backup outfielder. Uh, he only appeared in 316 games throughout his entire career. Has a lifetime 229 batting average um, with 16 home runs and 157 hits. So... Again, the nostalgia of trying to collect Seattle pi or Pilots autographs is why I wrote Mr. Comer, and I'm very happy to add those to my collection. All right, so hopefully I got this right with the postmark. In Metroplex, Michigan, because that's a big area. <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of old Detroit Tigers, and it is indeed Michigan native. And Seattle Pilot, Jim Gosker, or Gosker, on one, two is a Pilot, one is a Montreal Expo, one is a Kansas City A, or is that Oakland at that point? I don't remember. Well, he's an A. <laughs> and one is a Boston Red Sox. So five of five for Mr. Gosker. He also, I don't have, where'd that letter go? I want to say he wrote something on the note, too. Yep, there it is. He also wrote, thanks for asking. Joel, best wishes, Jim. He didn't sign his full name, but that's still pretty cool that he acknowledged on the back of my letter. You know, me writing him, so thank you very much for doing so. Pretty cool. Uh, so anyways, here's the uniqueness about Mr. Go Gosker, or Gosker, if I'm saying that incorrect. After reviewing his stats a little bit, I noticed that he played for a number of teams. Uh, he actually played for one, two, three, four, five, five teams. Well, the cool thing about that is three of the five teams that he played for no longer exist. He played for the Seattle Pilots. He played for the Kansas City A's. He also was with Oakland, so he was both a Kansas City and Oakland A. And he also played for the Montreal Expos. So this gentleman, having a 10-year career in Major League Baseball, never really playing anywhere more than three years at each, each of his stops, actually played for three teams that no longer exist. I bet you if Mr. Gosker saw this video and said, man, I wish I would have kept my uniforms, my, my hats, my, my whatever from being a pilot, from being an expo to a Kansas City A, he could probably make a fortune selling his stuff to museums you know, throughout the country now. Because, I mean, not that the Boston Red Sox having your equipment from being the Red Sox wouldn't be cool, but to have your equipment from a team that doesn't even exist anymore, that would be even more amazing, in my opinion, just from a collector standpoint. But uh, as you can see from his card, uh, he was primarily an outfielder, but also played from some first base. Um, that's probably because of his left-handed hitting. Uh, did he throw left-handed? I'm not sure. Yes, he threw left-handed as well. 
So he threw left and batted left, so that makes sense why he played some first base. Um, over his 10-year career, um, you know, he had stops with the Boston. That's who he came up with. He was only 20 years old when he came up with the Red Sox. Um, spent the year in the minors, it looks like. Then he in 65, he was back with the Red Sox and also 66. Um, he also... Um, you know, played for the Kansas City A's. It looks like he got a chance in 1967 to be their full-time outfielder. He responded batting 242 uh, and hitting five home runs and five triples that year. So if he had five triples, that tells me he had a little speed on the bases as well. Um, then he was, I guess, taken in the expansion draft by the Pilots. Then he was on the 69 Mets. I did not know that. Wow. He was on the 1969 Miracle Mets. I was not aware of that. I don't know if he spent time on the World Series roster. I mean, I guess I would have been a... Oh, man. I have a Mets set. <laughs> that just reminded me. I have, a, I have a 69 Mets set. I should have looked to see if he has a card in that set. Crap. Oh, well. Well, if I come across some more vintage cards of him, I'm sure he'd be more than happy to sign if he is in that Mets set. So, anyways, he played for the Mets on 69, then he went to the Montreal Expos after that. But the ironic part is, he must have liked the Mets a lot, because in 1973 and 4, he was back in the Mets outfield as a backup outfielder. So, anyways, uh, had a pretty respectable career as a backup. Uh, had a starting season, but very happy to add um, Mr. Gosker's autograph to my collection, not to mention the other Seattle Pilots cards also signed so thank you mr mcnurtney and mr comer i really appreciate you signing those for me uh i want to thank you the viewers for joining me for another episode hopefully um you learned a little bit about a team that doesn't exist anymore in the seattle pilots uh definitely check out uh, some of their history i might uh, put a link to their uh their their uh, team down in the description below if you want to learn about some of the other players that played on that team so Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for another episode.